Probably the last time the Mercedes is gonna be this high. So we'll have a big old gap, maybe three, two fingers, somewhere like that. Exciting day because today is the day that the S55 AMG gets coilovers. Now this doesn't seem like that big of a deal obviously to a lot of people, but for this car specifically, it rides absolutely terrible with the broken ABC suspension on here, and the ABC suspension on here is a hydraulic suspension system. It stands for active body control. But with the way it is right now, it just maxes out on full height and then becomes super stiff. So we got some full-on coilovers to install and then get this thing nice and slammed and also, you know, much better ride quality. I'm in S55 right now. We're gonna take it around the block and just show you the ride quality because right now it's, uh pretty atrocious, I would say. Gotta get the car to raise. Okay. Why does every car I have need gas? Holy shit. Finally found some speed bumps. The harshest ride ever. All right, ready to go on some bumps? So typically when you go over bumps, it's just kind of like whatever. These are, these are like normal parking lot but speed bumps right here, right? I'm going less than like five miles an hour. See how bouncy it is just for like a little dip? Yeah, now it's full, now, yeah. We're at full stiffness now. Every single little dip in the road makes the car like bounce. Like these are literally, I'm, I'm, what I'm driving on right now are just like small cracks inside of a parking lot. Otherwise it's pretty much smooth. All this is smooth. Wait, you see that speed bump? Very small. Oh my. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go super slow now just to make it bearable. So I think I think you guys get the picture. So you see what I'm saying? It's like as if the suspension goes up to like all the way max, then it just kind of like bounces there. It's super stiff. There's like no suspension travel. It's really, really weird. Okay, so having seen that, let's install some coilovers, slam this car, also hopefully get a better ride. We'll find out. The coilovers we're using for this install is gonna be by Yellow Speed Racing. If you've been around the drift scene a lot, then you know that obviously your main coilover manufacturers are like Stance, Feel, Fortunato, BC Racing. Um, I feel like those are the main companies, but, but a lot of those companies don't manufacture for obscure makes and models. So on this W220 Mercedes, you really only have a limited option of coilovers, which is how I found out about Yellow Speed Racing. Voila. So got these coilovers, obviously a little skeptical because it's not a brand that, you know what I mean, is very, very popular. However, Forrest Wang is also running Yellow Speed Racing coilovers this year in Formula D. So, pretty confident with them after that. Yeah, they look pretty good. Got some stickers and some keychain boys. A little whole toolkit over here too. I'll go take that apart as well. Looks like it has all the adjusters for dampening as well as the wrenches for the collars. I believe this is the rear set over here, which needs to have... This is so dumb doing it one-handed. Obviously this one's gonna thread onto the bottom of that one. And judging by this end over here, we're gonna use that on the rear. Then we got this coilover, which is gonna be for the front. Oh, missing a nut. These things are massive compared to S13 coilovers. <laughs> Just for comparison, that is the old bent coilover off of the off-road Miata project we got going on. And then there is the yellow speed racing coilover for the Mercedes, like twice the size. Look how thick it is too. Overall impression, we got dust boot over here, bump stop, everything seems pretty nice. What it's gonna, what it's gonna come down to, obviously, is when we're installing it, whether it fits, and then how good it rides after. Let's just take a look at this toolkit, and then we'll get to installing them. Got the instruction manual. Got two different collar wrenches. Solid. I have no idea what these are for, but we'll find out. Dampening adjustment, sticker. Also, Yellow Speed makes big brake kits and some adjustable arms it looks like and some other stuff so i mean that's pretty cool dude imagine if we did a big brake kit on something that'd be sick also what's crazy is that these things are 33 way adjustable for the damping oh yeah dude and they give you some standard settings here that's pretty cool turn the adjustment knob to 12 clip clicks from the softest setting that's for the front and then turn the adjustment knob eight clicks from the softest setting that's for the rear it's pretty cool they have a baseline 
Sweet. So we covered enough of that. Let's get to slapping these off the car. I think the rear is the easiest to get to, so let's do that. I mean, there's already some tutorials out there on how to change out the suspension. So we're just gonna blaze through this. Only four lug nuts. Bottom is loose. Now the annoying part to do is you have to get in the back seat over here. Behind the back seat, that little cubby right there needs to get removed. And then the three bolts for the top of the shock are right there. So you gotta go and undo the three of them. Top is undone, bottom is undone. Time to Eutychus. This right here is the hydraulic line that's come in off of one of the ports on the power steering pump and that's making this, you know, the hydraulic system that it is. They have a quick release right here. Yeah, quick release my... Ah, oh, there we go. Woo! I'm gonna finesse this big old thing out of here. So there's the stock rear ABC strut for the Mercedes and in comparison we got the yellow speed coilovers off to the right. That is the rear setup which comes unassembled so you pretty much just need to thread that onto the shock body. Sometimes you can put some anti-seize over here if you don't want it to seize up. But from what I read in the little brochure about this thing, is that it already has uh, an anti-corrosion coating on here. So I'm gonna go and say that the anti-seize isn't necessary. Of course, adding it doesn't hurt. Preload is already set, so it doesn't need to be adjusted, which saves time. And to do a quick run through on the coilovers, right? So you have the spring over here, which you wanna have a little bit of preload on the spring over here, because it pre-compresses the spring a little bit, right? pre puts load on it. So that is that, once that's set, you leave it alone. And then for ride height, you adjust all down here, right? So you could have this threaded up and down as far as you want, and that's gonna adjust your height. Now some lower end coilovers, the way they adjust height is by messing with the preload. So they don't really have separate collars over here. Instead, this just kind of like threads onto there. And then in order to lower the car, you're basically just lowering where the springs sit, which of course messes with the amount of preload you have and it also decreases the amount of shock travel that you have. So having a coilover where preload is separate from ride height adjustment is what you want. As far as the quality on these, everything actually looks very, very nice so far. The only pet peeve I have though, there seemed to be some contamination with the weld, which you know typically happens. But then once it got coated in whatever this process was that they used to coat all this, you see some of that contamination coming up. Obviously, I'm not I'm not an expert on this, but it, that's just what it looks like. This is kind of like a purely aesthetic thing, and honestly, they're gonna be on your car, right? Getting dirt and stuff on them, so whatever. It could just be a one-off thing with them. But one thing for them to improve on is to, you know, have a nice, even black coating over here. That's it. Literally everything else <laughs> is very nice. Put this like that. I'm gonna start threading this on. So for right now, I'm setting this gap to four inches to match the other side of the car. But of course, once we drive the car around, we're gonna readjust all this, but this is just a baseline. Yeah, we'll also, we'll also tighten the collars once it's on the car, so that way we can freely move this around. It's crazy how big the shocks are in S-Class. I'm so excited. Okay, let's get this thing in there. Okay. Boy, get up in there. So with the new coilover in place and seated in the arm, the hardest thing to do right now is get all three holes to line up over there and then tighten them. So what I find to be pretty good is to shine a flashlight in there. It's really hard because there's some reflection picked up by the camera, but you can look in there and then you can actually line it up fairly well by doing that. And then you can get the top bolts to all to line up because the bolts only go in one way, because Mercedes. So rather than having it where, you know, it's just a three bolt and they can go in any way, you gotta keep rotating it and try all three different orientations until it lines up. Whew, so that is my next task. 
There we got it. One stud, two stud, and the third stud in place. Swag. And now my favorite part, just tightening everything up. God damn it. All right, so for doing the locking collars, it's pretty easy. You just thread one of these down. They give you an additional one over here to lock against it, but typically most coilovers, they just have one that lock against, so this is actually better than most. But even with just one, they typically don't come loose. So snug it up, get it tight, and then get your coilover wrench. Pretty much just hook it in and then tighten. Okay. One. There you go. Both those are now tightened and you know your ride height is all set. Woo! Also, I just want everybody to note how high I have this coilover adjusted right now. I actually had it all the way up to like here initially, but that made it so so low that I couldn't even put the wheel on the car. So I had it down to here and it and hopefully it ends up turning out fairly decent and you know, once it squats down and everything and I drive it around a little bit, let the suspension settle, it should be fairly low. But it can definitely, definitely be adjusted to make your car pretty much undrivable. As far as this hydraulic line right here, I'm actually going to take that and just tuck it up there for right now. Anyways, let's put some wheels on. All right, here we go, boys. I see how clapped to the fuck out it gets. Why would that change how low it's going to get? Yeah, it's like perfect height. Let me see. It's acceptable. Oh, so there we have it. It's looking pretty good. Obviously, we got to pull the car out to get a full shot, but that is like, like goes in a little bit. It's pretty good. But now, on to the front. <laughs> Alright guys, so unfortunately in this video I'm probably just going to have to leave it at just doing the rears and then in the next video I'm going to get to doing the fronts as well as reviewing everything and adjusting it all. Reason being is because of the accident on that front end over here, the control arm was smashed and the OEM coilover was all bent out of place as well. So I had to go to the junkyard, grab another lower control arm off an S-Class just kind of quickly get it done. Well, it turns out that the mounting point is completely different off of this. So I'm gonna end up needing to go back to the junkyard, get another W220 lower control arm, and then finish up, and then finish up the install and like reviewing it and everything. So, so this video is already a good length as it is, and I already did kind of like an overview on the coilovers and you know installing them and all that sort of thing. So I think in the next video I'll just finish wrapping up the whole front end over there, drive the car, test drive it, see how it is, adjust everything, get it all tuned out, and then upload part two of pretty much this coilover install on the Mercedes. Sorry I couldn't have it all in one video. But if you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed, make sure to subscribe so you keep updated on all the videos. And if you are already subscribed, make sure to keep notifications on. Other than that, follow me on Instagram, offbeat underscore garage, because I pretty much just vented about this whole situation on there. And then, uh, and then also check out the store, offbeatgarage.com. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh my goodness. So. I'm exactly what you like, half woman, half car.